Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Reed Gray with Berkshire Hathaway Seed and Joiner Realtors and I'm excited to bring you this video today. You might be wondering who this guy is <laughs> and this is Mike Cruz and what we're going to talk about today is his tour which is Make Greenville Yours. So with that it's going to be helpful information for someone who may be watching this video uh, considering relocating to Greenville, South Carolina. We're going to cover a little bit of history and then we're going to cover maybe where Greenville is headed. So Mike, thank you so much much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, Reed. This is great. I always enjoy getting the word out. Absolutely. So, Mike, you run Make Greenville Yours. Right. Can you tell the people who may be watching this a little bit about what that is and what you do? Sure. Make Greenville Yours is a three-hour tour of the greater Greenville area. It starts in downtown Greenville, goes through Malden, Simpsonville, Taylor's, Greer, and Travers Rest, and those are the primary towns where people will locate when they move to the area. Not the only ones, but the primary ones. And after the three-hour tour, folks will have a better idea of what it means to live in Greenville. Sure. What, what does it cost to take your, your three-hour tour? It's $75 per person, a minimum of two people. Now, one person can take the tour and pay the price of two, but uh, they'll find it uh, well worth their while. It's worth the investment. Yeah, absolutely. I know several people who have taken the tour. I know people just like you who are watching the channel right now that have already taken Mike's tour or have planned to do so. Um, what has been kind of the experience of people who have taken your tour and then ended up relocating here or chose otherwise? Well, it's been fascinating because when I meet them, they generally don't know much about Greenville. It may be their first trip to the area. So I always joke with them, if it's the first time here, it really makes my job easier because I can make things up and they would know the difference. <laughs> well, that's purely a joke. Uh, I'm, I'm well invested in the accuracy of what I share with our folks. But I might tell you, uh, really at this point, how this developed. I'm a semi-retired pastor. About 10 years ago, I had to step back from full-time to part-time due to some health events in the previous years. And from that point on, I started taking my wife to work. She was a nurse and uh, she was working 12 hour shifts and I'd take her and then I'd stop at Soli Steamers, a great sandwich restaurant in downtown Greenville. And uh, Soli's a good friend of mine, well worth the visit. But I'd stop there a couple times a week, get a bite to eat and I'd make phone calls, work on my iPad and I'd meet people. Being a pastor, that's my heartbeat is people. Mm -hmm. So one morning, October, 2015, I met three people from Miami, Florida a young couple and the girl's mom. They had always lived in Miami, were tired of it. We're thinking about moving to Texas or Oregon, but they saw Greenville on the internet and decided to check it out. I said, well, what are you gonna do today? They said, we're gonna try to make sense out of Greenville. I said, well, I'm gonna make you a strange offer. If you're willing to get in my full-size Tundra truck, I'll show you Greenville. They didn't know me, I didn't know them. They got in my truck. Really? Now think about that. I don't know how many places you would see that <laughs> take place. Only in the South. Really? So I gave them an informal impromptu tour of, of Greenville. Then I dropped them off at our visitor center. I said, you know, go in there and they'll let you know what to do while you're here. Well, the young gal, she got out of the truck. She said, you know, we start out with an interest in Greenville. Now we love it. And they moved to Greer, one of those towns, two months later became good friends of ours, even came to church with us a couple times. And the mom in the course of that little tour had told me that her and her husband are thinking about retiring to Beaufort, South Carolina on the coast. When the tour was done, she said, we're not retiring to Beaufort, we're retiring to Greenville. Okay. Sure enough, a few years ago, they retired to Greenville and uh, that put a thought in my little pea brain that there was a need. People were being attracted to Greenville, but it's hard to appreciate on your own. So I arranged to have coffee with the mayor. I'd known him for a number of years, just enough to say hi to. And I bounced the idea off of him and he thought it was great. And so from that point on, Make Greenville Yours became a reality. And I started reaching out to realtors and letting realtors know that uh, we could have a great relationship, that they could do what they do best and I could do what I do best. I'll show off Greenville so that when you take my tour, you're better equipped to know whether this is the area for you or not. And then you go on with a guy like Reed who will find the house. Mm -hmm. So we work very well together. Yeah, that's awesome. So a couple of things I want to dive into off of that specifically is one, if you had to say the primary areas that people are coming from, have you noticed a trend? 
There is uh, the Northeast, mm -hmm. Chicago area, yeah. you know, the Illinois uh, pocket. Uh, the West Coast, I'm getting more from uh, California and Oregon. And then Florida, believe it or not, you hear a lot of people moving to Florida, but a lot of people moving out of Florida. And oftentimes you'll, you'll see folks, particularly from the North, who will move down to Florida and they might be disillusioned. It, they might find it to be too hot, too buggy, too long. They might miss a change of seasons. One hurricane gets their attention, so they move halfway back to the north. And, of course, we call them halfbacks. Yeah. So I'm curious, what are some typical questions of people uh, who have taken your tour that are not from the area that those who are watching right now may also be thinking? Well, people will ask about weather, and we get all four seasons, and it's moderate, so none of the seasons are overwhelming, but you do get an honest change of seasons. They'll ask me about where the best area is to live. So out of all those towns, I let them know that I know folks that live in every one of those towns and they love it for different reasons, which is why it's important that anybody think about moving to the area gets exposed to each one of those towns so they have a better feel for what it would mean to live in Malden or mm -hmm. A Simpsonville or Taylor's or Travers Rest or Greer. So kind of talking about best areas, I think that's really interesting because Greenville is a great city, but the Simpsonville is far different than, you know, Travelers mm -hmm. Rest. Mm -hmm. And the downtown area is going to be far different than Taylor's. Right. It's something really great that if you're thinking, hey, I love Greenville, and then you reach out to me and we start talking about Taylor's, you're going to be like, Reed, what in the world are we talking about? Right. I want to move to Greenville, not Taylor's. Sure. And there's just kind of the surrounding areas, right? And, and, and I do tell people that the tour begins using downtown Greenville as the hub and basically does a circle and wraps around through those towns and comes back to downtown Greenville. And there's a symbiotic relationship between Greenville and those other towns. Uh, with Greenville's success, the rule of supply and demand kicks into gear. Real estate prices go up, people move further out to get more bang for their buck. So those five towns that I'm showing off, they all are benefiting and they all have master plans. Mm -hmm. So they all have a vision and energy, a personality that you can't appreciate unless you go through and hear the perspective that I'll share with you. And so with that, I wanna talk about the hottest areas, right? Right. That, that people kind of think that they wanna be in. And then where do you think that your tours may expand to? Uh, as Greenville grows. So if you would, let's go with question number one there. What are some of the hottest areas that after people take your tours mm -hmm. uh, that they're like, yeah, th this is the neighborhood I want to be in? Oftentimes they really are drawn to that pocket from Greer to Travers Rest. When I take them along Highway 290 mm -hmm. and you're going out and all of a sudden the Blue Ridge Mountains pop mm -hmm. and you're seeing the border to North Carolina and if you're attracted to outdoor activities, mm -hmm. that's more of where that's going to be uh, more readily available. And so they may not have even considered that area before the tour. And Traveler's Rest is really a, a small town that's, that's beginning to explode. People want to move out there and the inventory is not available, but there are new builds going up. Hey, I'll be going out to Traveler's Rest this evening at 5 o'clock to show a couple of places. Yeah. yeah. It, um, I was in Traveler's Rest this weekend, right. right? And I'm driving through their little main street, right. and it's not so little anymore. Nah. It, it's still charming and quaint. Oh, sure. But there's a lot of activity going on. There is. And what, what people don't understand, if you're driving through it on your own, you may see a little town that's quaint, as mm -hmm. you said, but you don't have a sense of what's behind the scenes, the, the, the energy, the vision, the pride that the people have in mm. that town of Traveler's Rest. That's why that perspective of understanding what's ha happening now and what's the plan for the future mm -hmm. comes into play. Absolutely. Because people, one of the concerns, you asked about what people ask me, one of the concerns is they're impressed with Greenville's growth. Greenville's become one of the top communities in the country to live right now. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's a concern that maybe they're growing too fast and it'll be overwhelming. Well, I often advise people, be careful. You never want to move to a town that's stagnant or dying. 
You know, they're stagnant. They're going, they're going to be dying. Right. That's just what happens. You want to go to a town that has energy, vision, vitality. And so the challenge that comes with that is having intentional growth. And we've been, we've been blessed with intentionality. With It's never perfect, but I think I'd compete. I'd put it up against any community in the country in terms of really trying to be deliberate in how they develop and how they expand. Sure. I, I think that that's great that you said that because uh, I'll give you guys an example. I've got a client. He relocated from Florida, and he's a great friend now. He, he cracks me up. And he's going to watch this video. And he's going to give me a hard time about <laughs> it. Um, and he says, hey, Reed, I know you have your YouTube channel. Yeah. Where are people coming from? Are they coming from California? And I said, well, yeah, I had two conversations this week from California. Sure. And, you know, his kind of concern is Greenville's growing so quickly. He's been here for six months. Right. How is it going to look in, you know, a year versus when he moved here? Right. And I think with what the local government has done, they've been intentional about our growth. Right. Um, you mentioned, you know, Mayor Knox White yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they're growing well. They're growing properly. They're growing quickly. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll certainly admit that. The one thing that I want them to do, and I don't know that they ever will, at, at Church Street in Augusta, right. let's put in a little overpass right, right. there because it gets bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people will have all kinds of opinions. You know, it's never going to be quite good enough for them. But I do advise folks, if you move here, uh, embrace it mm -hmm. and help enhance it. And you'll be warmly welcomed. That's awesome. People are proud of what they have. And uh, when the cities do plan and they, they have their master plan, like Greenville City has a master plan 2040. It's been in place for a couple years now. Mm -hmm. And it's not a plan that gathers dust. They really strive to follow it. But they take time to get community input. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I want to kind of discuss a little bit further is the outdoor activities. I think that's one main thing that drives people here to Greenville. You mentioned it briefly. Mm -hmm. So we have the Swamp Rabbit Trail, we have the lakes, we mm -hmm. have Paris Mountain and things mm -hmm. like that. Is that something that you discuss on your tour? Oh, I do, especially when I get out to toward Traver's Rest because within a half hour to 45 minutes from Traver's Rest, beyond the ready availability of the Swamp Rabbit Trail, you have access to Table Rock State Park, Caesars Head State Park, Jones Gap State Park, Devil's Fork State Park. You have Lake Jocassee that pours into Lake Kiwi, that pours into Lake uh, Hartwell. So all kinds of outdoor activities are, are available additionally in that, in that pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, the Swamp Rabbit Trail right now is a 26 mile paved uh, running biking trail, walking biking trail. And it's patrolled by police on bike or motorcycle. They're the only ones allowed to have a motorized vehicle. You're allowed to have e-bikes. But that's been fascinating. I tell people, to me, it's a sociological phenomenon. Wherever it lands, it stimulates development. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, rails to trails are common throughout the country. Everybody's familiar with that concept. But I doubt that there's many that have had the impact that the Swamp Rabbit Trail has had sure. on the community. I think that there's people who have moved here in the past specifically for the Swamp Rabbit Trail right. and what that would enable them to do in all of what Greenville offers. Um, I know that when you may be watching this video, you think that I just sit on camera and just kind of play realtor. I think that's possible that you may have that, you know, idea in your head. But the reality is, is later today, as I mentioned to Mike earlier, going out to Traveler's Rest and I have people really locating from Florida right now and they've determined they only want to be where the husband can bike to the swamp right, rabbit. Right. And that's a main kind of driving factor in where they end sure, up purchasing. Sure. Um so I think that's kind of the reality of it there. Now we talked about Greenville growing and the areas that your tour covers. Where do you think it may expand to if your tour expands yeah, good question. And uh, Fountain Inn is obviously on the, on the radar. Mm -hmm. They're doing things there. That's a little further, uh, several miles southeast of Simpsonville. Uh, Tesla is going to put a, uh, a distribution center there. That's going to add, you know, several hundred jobs, and it's going to be a big deal. Uh, so that I can see that being added to mm -hmm. it. Also, easily in Pickens County, 
Uh, they're starting to build out there, and uh, easily is the town that you drive through to get out to uh, Clemson University. I think uh, easily often gets kind of overlooked as yeah. well, mm-hmm. and really, it's if you're kind of looking at it on a map, right? It's you're not that much further away from downtown Greenville and easily than you would be in parts of Simpsonville. Oh no, no question about it. Now, now uh, easily structures a little bit more. I say helter skelter. It's not a Greenville, but they're doing things. I mean, they have resources there, and they are doing things, and they're trying to adapt to this this growth. Mm-hmm. Powdersville yeah. uh, is another area uh, just south of the city that's right. uh, that's coming up and growing more. Definitely. Tell me what you think about Woodruff. Woodruff. I had a I had a family from uh, Minnesota uh, a couple years ago to take my tour. And a great family, and the woman was just a ball of fire. And she's influenced a number of families from Minnesota to move here. Matter of fact, I've probably had half a dozen tours through her getting friends to move down wow. here. Uh, matter of fact, last November, I rented a 15 passenger van and I took eight girlfriends of hers on the tour. They represented eight different families. And she lives out in Woodruff. Now, Woodruff is uh, about 15 miles out of Greenville, but it's a little more open area. You might be able to get a little more land out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a little more 15 miles, 15, 18 miles. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that Woodruff is something that I wanted to, to bring up because of the amount of new construction going on mm-hmm. there, the amount of kind of industrial and manufacturing jobs out there with BMW, uh, Oh, Michelin. no question about it. Um, if you're moving here from somewhere else, that may be a good opportunity for you. No question about it. And these towns we're talking about, they're not all that far from, they're within a half hour of mm-hmm. downtown Greenville. So you're not that far from tapping into the resources. I will say one thing um, to give you a total picture. Um, the name of our minor league baseball team is the Greenville Drive. Yeah. It sounds like a strange name, but the word drive is a tribute to the influence of the automotive industry in Greenville. Back in the early 80s, Michelin located its North American headquarters here. In 92, BMW did the same. And in 2007, the International Center for Automotive Research came to town. But the word drive is also a tribute to the people of Greenville, uh, who went from being the textile capital of the world Mm -hmm. in 1960 to losing it all overseas to cheaper labor, to reinventing itself to being one of the top communities in the country to live. So that word drive reflects their energy, vision, resilience to come back to be who they are today. We have cities all the time that visit Greenville to tap Greenville's uh, resources to see what the secret sauce was Mm -hmm. to reinvent themselves from what what they once were and losing it to become what they are now. And as we talk about what they once were, what we once were is I would love to put up on camera right here a picture of what Falls Park used to look like. Oh, yeah. And then what Falls Park looks like today. Mayor Knox White have actually kind of sat in on one of his uh, public speaking events before. Right, right. And he mentioned that other cities, I think Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama right. was one that they came and kind of did a study of our space. Yeah. And the overwhelming response was, we love our green spaces here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that that's really cool and something that we take into account. And that brings up a point that I tell people we've had a history of leadership with vision and backbone willing to pursue the vision. Um, you know, textile town, 18 textile mills prior to 1920. And so that really defined our economy to a large extent. You had all these mill villages mm-hmm. that have uh, in the meantime been repurposed. So when I moved down here in 86, Greenville wasn't anything to write home about. Mm-hmm. I moved down from Philly to go to seminary. And the only reason I came to Greenville is I knew some men that went to seminary that I respected. I was looking forward to being done seminary and following the Lord wherever he led me, hoping it would not be Greenville. (laughs) But I tell people God does have a sense of humor, and he did keep me here. But that allowed me to see the transformation that Greenville went through. And today, I'm so glad he kept me because I can't imagine living anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And to have seen that transformation has been fascinating. But it's because of men like Tommy Weish, 
a lawyer back in the early 70s who was concerned about the demise of Greenville with the mills starting to go overseas for cheaper labor, department stores leaving Main Street, going out to the malls. You had closed up factories, boarded up storefronts, people out of work. And he's reading a magazine. He sees a picture of a large fountain in Portland, Oregon. A big, elaborate, attractive fountain. He thinks, boy, that's what we need, something like that to attract people back to downtown. Mm -hmm. And he talked to a city planner, brought a consulting team into town. They looked over the city and told the city planners, the city leaders, that uh, you don't need anything like a large fountain. What you need to do is widen your sidewalks, narrow your main street from four lanes to two, and you need the landscape. Well, the mayor at the time was a man by the name of Max Heller, a Jewish man who escaped Vienna, Austria in 1938, prior to Hitler invading. And he was just rounding out his first term as mayor, but... In 1938, he just escaped Vienna, Austria, prior to Hitler invading. He had met a woman a year before who was on a tour of Vienna from Greenville. Her name, ironically, was Mary Mills. Okay. And he contacted her to see if she could find somebody to sponsor him for a job. And she talked to her boss, Shep Saltzman, who owned the Piedmont Shirt Factory in Greenville. And Shep was a Jewish man who made it his mission to help Jewish immigrants get established. So Shep hired Max. Max came over, did great in the industry, eventually moved up the ladder, became vice president. Sometime after that, he went out on his own and he opened his own shirt factory. Did so well with that, he retired in his mid-40s, and then he got involved in politics. On city council, and then when he was rounding up his first term as mayor is when that consulting team was making his recommendations. So he got the lo local business owners together and said, listen, I'll run for mayor second term if you all agree to pursue those recommendations. Well, they did, and he did. and. That's how we have our downtown. Yeah. That kind of leadership. And then Mayor Knox White, this is his 29th year as mayor. And we talk about Falls Park and Liberty Bridge going in back in 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. That was very controversial. And if it did not turn out the way it did, I don't think Mayor Knox White would be celebrating his 29th year as mayor. That next election might have cost him that position and it's turned out very very well oh it's been well. amazing it it has it has stimulated all that development downtown and is it is a center point for downtown greenville mm -hmm. it definitely is so i just learned something new that was awesome on your tour should you come to greenville and visit and consider relocating here i know you're going to learn more great new things about our, our city here uh, I want to touch on this, kind of pay homage to, to my grandmother real quick. So she lived in Nashville, Tennessee about her whole life. Okay. And my mother was the first person to, to relocate to Greenville. Um, I went to school at Lander University, which is in Greenwood, about an hour away right. from here. Um, but my grandmom said to my mother when she moved here, she said, why are you going to that tired little old mill town? <laughs> and that was her perception sure, of Greenville. Sure. And it's the furthest thing from that. I think the amount of people that are that are moving here, but also who thoroughly love kind of our city and the environment that it that it creates is really cool. So it's no longer a little old mill town, Grandma. One last thing, and then we'll cover anything that we missed. Your tour, when you have people ride around with you, you mentioned uh, a van and then you mentioned your truck. What does that accommodation look like for okay. people who take your tour? It, typically, it's a comfortable eight-passenger Toyota Sienna van. And I'll take up to, if it's a family, five. If it's uh, they're not related, up to four people at a time. Gotcha. If I need to get another vehicle, I have access to a 15-passenger vehicle. Gotcha. So I That's can, not I your primary that. vehicle, is it? The 15 passenger one? Yeah. No. No, you're no. not driving around a school bus all day. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I got rid of the truck when I started the business. I miss that truck. <laughs> I will tell you one thing. Please. I will tell you one thing. Um, for the first 20 years down here, just my wife and I have four children. So oftentimes at Thanksgiving and Christmas, we'd invite strays for dinner. People didn't have families, so our kids never knew who was coming to dinner. Mm -hmm. It was like a hodgepodge. Well, that changed about 17 years ago because two of my brothers from the Philly area realized we had a good thing down here, and they moved down here six months apart from each other. In the last, about 15 years ago, our best friends moved down here from Philly, and then their three sons eventually followed them down. And then in the last 10 to 12 years, four of my nephews, one of my nieces, have moved their families down here. I was just looking at a family picture at Thanksgiving. We were having dessert together. There's now 56 of us in Greenville that started out with just six of us. And there's not a one of them that want to leave. Yeah. Wow. That is really cool. So, Mike, I appreciate your time today. Is there anything that we missed? There's so, there's so much. But, <laughs> but I, think, I think we've given them a good picture and a sense of the value of both uh, 
Greenville area and mm -hmm. checking it out and the value of doing my tour Absolutely. and the value of working with a guy like Reed. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that and I appreciate your time. Guys, thank you for tuning in to our channel. Um, I'm so excited for each and every one of you that watches and takes the time to do so, but also those who contact me um, and the opportunity to help you with moving here to Greenville, South Carolina. So thank you. Make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, thank you to Harrison Williamson for sponsoring this video. Any mortgage needs that you may have, make sure you reach out to Harrison. We'll catch you next time.